Hey everyone, good to see you again. Or, yeah, I know that you see me, so good to see you again. I feel the energy. So, um, I had a dream, ah, it's the name of a song, <laughs> but really, I had a dream um, that when I woke up. I had those um, ideas that I wanted to share mainly because of that dream. I dreamt of someone or someone visited me for the first time in so long, in so many months, even though that person was the main character of my ongoing story that was happening before I kind of transformed he never visited me, not even once even though he was controlling my emotions and mine at, at that time he never visited me in my dreams, not even once <laughs> it was so strange like my subconscious was kind of, I don't know, maybe protecting me or something but maybe because I came to reach inner peace and I totally um, have very loving feelings towards that person in another way I mean it I hope he understands what I mean I'm totally open to visiting in dreams, to having that person in any form because I am totally in inner peace with my story, with my past, with my memories it's amazing and in that dream it was actually a cheerful one we were doing good things together like uh, I don't know how to explain this but it was like some sort of a mission doing things for the good of others, something like that. It was, it was nice. And when I woke up, I had those uh, thoughts and realization that this person actually, during him being in my life, he was always telling me things that I came to learn now, on my own, but because of the way he was telling me those things, supposedly it was advice at that time, it was impermeable to me. It did not penetrate me, they didn't reach me. Because of how he said those things, and the context in which he was saying those things, and the way he was saying those things, and... Um, me, at that moment, receiving it from him. I realized that he has a lot to share and give, but the only problem is how he address and when and the way that each person would receive what he is giving him would be different. Before speaking about um, what I really want to share and concentrate on, I want to explain something very important. I don't know if some of you have watched the cartoon, the um, animation Soul. Um, it's amazing they did a brilliant job to explain how we get immersed in our daily lives and the things that are affecting us all the time and our souls are like um surrounded by this ball of dust and and darkness and blackness and we are like lost souls and we need to shake off all those things so that we can be suggestible to information we can be impermeable. We can receive and accept what others are telling us. 
That's one point. Second point, so this is the point uh, like related to us. What you, you need to start by yourself shaking off those things by not always being on the survival mode which is your analytical mind that is your always thinking and overthinking and and give yourself a break relax um think of nothing so that you will be more open to how you could think of solutions to other things that's your part also your family your partners the ones who love you need to know how to make you feel comfy and safe if they are trying to introduce an idea to you or advise you or tell you something so when i woke up i remembered and recalled what he was most of the time telling me stop being in the victim mentality i don't want to know someone who is always in the victim mentality um stop the drama don't be a drama queen um assumptions do not assume ask all of those are great learnings so great learnings but if a person is cocooned in this ball of dust and darkness surrounding their them and emotions and they are they what what are they going to receive if they don't feel safe if they don't feel comfy if they feel that what you're telling them is just attacking them like are you telling me to not feel what i'm feeling are you telling me to not be emotional and express how i feel what i feel this is this were the thoughts when somebody tells someone who doesn't understand what does it mean victim mentality when they hear the word victim it it would sound to them that the other person is telling them you are not allowed to express your feelings you are not allowed to show emotions uh what you are doing is invalid i will not um communicate with you and let you feel safe and um contain your emotions because you are in the thing that has the term victim mentality this 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 is what was going on so my advice and what i have learned and through my own experience if you have a loved one if you have someone you care about if you want to deliver an information to them first of all make them s- feel safe and secure in the environment while you're speaking with them let them know that their emotions are valid let them know that they are allowed to feel things explain to them what do you mean by victim mentality explain to them what is the word victim of life or circumstances explain to them what do you mean by stop the drama and then you can tell them ah this is what is called victim mentality do not start with that stop with the victim mentality it's so impermeable information it will never go through to someone who's going through something so that's the thing another thing i want to explain to people what is a victim mentality first of all we are humans we have feelings we have emotions this is how we function thoughts are the language of the brain emotions are the language of the heart of the body so when you are thinking of something and your body is feeling something this is how you are your being so if we don't feel we are not functional human beings there there is a list 
of hundreds of thousands of emotions. And as I said before in my previous videos, emotions are chemicals that allows us to feel something. So, we are allowed to feel everything, starting from anger, frustration, resentment, hatred to love, gratitude, compassion, kindness, from the zero to the hundred scale of emotions, if we could put them on a scale. However, the refractory period, the period in which you react to a certain emotion, this is what needs to be self-regulated. You need to know that you are in charge of your body, of your chemicals, which are your emotions. Something happened that made you feel angry. Get angry. But if you continued being angry for two hours, you are allowing your body, your subconscious, to take over your mind. You need to tell and tame your body that you are in charge of it. Your brain is in charge of your mind, your body. Your mind is in charge of your body. Your, your brain is in charge of your heart and emotions. This is how you self-regulate. So, you felt something, it frustrated or annoyed you. Be it, you're a human, you have to feel things, you're not a psychopath. <laughs> feel it. It's fine. But, do not allow what has occurred in the outer world, what ha the other person to control your inner peace, your emotions, because you have the ability to control the period of time in which you react to that. So feel angry for five minutes, ten minutes, one hour. Disconnect then. The thing that made you annoyed happened one hour ago. You're not there anymore. You're present in now. Separate how you're feeling from what happened one hour ago. This is how to stop being in the victim mentality. This is what I couldn't get when he said to me, stop being in the victim mentality. I have no idea what was in his mind while telling me this. Did he really understand fully the concept of self-regulations or he was just telling me to stop being the victim mentality because I felt like a victim to him. I don't know. But learning what is a victim mentality is very important. It's another side of the mirror of self-regulation. Stop being victim mentality is to self-regulate. So the thing is that as human beings, emotions are one of the most powerful tools and resources of creation that we possess. It, it's our emotion is the, is the autopilot of our body because you have it encrypted in you. It's not that you, you think all the time of how the anger emotion is like because you have it. It's, it's a chemical that, that knows how to make you act in a certain way. So, as a creator of our emotions, um, because we, are, we have the free will to control them and create them, every moment we have the opportunity to choose how to think, how to act and how we feel. So, this means that we also ha have the choice how to react to the people, circumstances and situations in our life. This is exactly what it means to stop being in the victim mentality. How to react to people, circumstances 
and situations in our lives. It is as simple as that and it's so beautiful to explain to your loved ones what does that mean. You have no idea how powerful and what difference the significance it will it could literally change them because we are we have been raised with those programs telling us that our characters don't change that uh, being sensitive means you have heightened and prolonged periods of feeling a certain emotion that you will stay angry for a long time or you will stay annoyed for a long time or you will stay frustrated for a long time. It's not like that, dear ones. Being sensitive, it means that you feel... We are all sensitive because we sense something, we feel something. We have been programmed to think that being sensitive means that we, have, we feel something for an elongated period of time. This is called addiction to a specific chemical. Addiction to a specific emotion. Because we take, when, when something of a strong emotional impact affected us, something you saw something or something happened to you or whatever you felt, if it's very strong emotionally, your mind memorizes it. Your your brain, your 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 neurocirculatory, the the things that are happening there, it takes a s snapshot of of that memory, and it's it's encrypted in your in your neurons and your gene, and it becomes a neurological memory, and then you have it in you. You're addicted to this chemical, which is your emotion, and you think ah. I am sensitive, that means I can feel angry all my life because I am so sensitive. What you're doing is that you're validating your addiction to anger, the chemical of anger, which is the emotion that's called anger. You are using the outer circumstances and the people to validate your attachment to the chemical, the emotion of frustration, anger, resentment, hatred. I would give an example from my experience and what I saw in the lives of people that are very dear to me. Some of the of my family members and my dear ones, my cherished ones, they had experience with other family members that during their childhood um, it impacted them so much that they had some, I don't I would say maybe a bit of a resenting feelings to the other family member, a bit of anger towards them, a bit of disappointment in them. They love them, but they are disappointed in them because of some certain actions they did to them during their childhood. And because during our childhood, we are very susceptible to information. We are very permeable to everything and every action that the external environment, the external circumstances, situation and the people in our lives are doing. We have one foot in um, the real life and one foot in our imaginary world. So everything that has that is being told to us during this childhood period goes right through inside and you have snapshots of those memories it's encrypted in your neuro and your neuro, uh, neurological memories it's in your genes you grow up with that you have this in you and unfortunately it becomes your temperament towards this person or individual or this country or environment or whatever that is was causing you some some sort of suffering at that time and that temperament of yours is your personality and it has created your personal reality of continued resentment and disappointed in that person which is a family member or whomever that could be 
So, when someone that is dear to me comes to me when I am still a lost soul and impermeable to his information because of what was happening to me back then and tells me, stop being in the victim mentality. And I see that this person himself is actually in a victim mentality in another way to his external circumstances, his other family member, he carries their resentment and disappointment in his heart. He is attached and addicted to the chemical of resentment and disappointed. How am I gonna accept his advice to me? If you are not doing what you're telling me, how can I learn by example? So, it's very important. Of course, because we are all humans, um, we have vulnerabilities. It doesn't mean that I need to be doing 100% everything that I'm advising you. I can advise you while I'm, like, if I'm a smoker, I can tell you to stop smoking because I can, I care about you even still if I'm smoking. Because advice is very precious. You owe your loved ones and yourselves advice. So, that's not what I'm saying. The thing is that advising in an attacking or criticizing way while you are still yourself doing the thing in another way that you are not realizing that you yourself are, are, is doing it, will not be permeable to the other person. You need to explain to the person lovingly and let them feel safe and secure how it is. So, that we have explained what it is being a victim mentality is that you are letting your circumstances, situation and people control the reaction period to those um, external aspects that could affect you. So um, the core practice or teaching to guide and enable people to self-regulate is to change the emotional state at will. You are 100% able to self-regulate yourself. Mm, I would say bra like practicing being less of a victim to life and more of a creator in life. The word victim is not necessarily a criticizing world. The way the other person will tell you, this is how you would feel, it would, you don't want to hear it or not. So this, I'm repeating again, it's very important to explain fully what do you mean by victim and make the other person feel safe and permeable to your advice so teach your loved ones that they are able to change their emotional state by their own will because we can because I'm repeating again emotions are chemicals that we feel and we could be addicted to if we continue having them over and over again. And as you could be addicted to resentment or disappointment, you can be addicted to gratitude or love. So that's a thing. Uh, yeah, so that's what I, I was, I woke up thinking about that this person is actually amazing like you have some amazing learn like teaching and learnings and information that for some reason I feel if he used other ways to tell the people he care about those things it will make a huge difference in their lives um, so uh, the other thing that uh, he was telling me is um, don't make assumptions and this is actually true but still the way it was being told so w how I would want to explain this to my loved ones not making assumptions 
is to find the courage to ask questions um, and to express what you really want. Mm, communicate. Communicate with the other person and clearly, um, as much clear as you can so that you could avoid misunderstandings. It's very important, be it a partner, a family member, just an acquaintance, communication, clearing misunderstandings, um, avoiding sadness, avoiding unnecessary drama, if you ask, simply. This is what I learned and what he was telling me, but in my impermeable state. If you are watching this video, you have to know that you have some amazing, brilliant information and knowledge that for some reason you are not using it fully and you need to learn a bit how to use it. This is my wish for you. You know how much I love you so much? Not you only, but everybody who's watching this video. I have so much love for everyone, and specifically that person in a family way, in a general way, that it's very important that I am delivering this right now, because I want good for him and for his loved ones to be in his life, be it his partner to come, his children to come, his family that he will create and for everybody else. It's very important to know how to give advice. So yeah, speaking about assumptions and uh, not making assumptions, with one agreement you can just transform your life if you communicate clearly, if you avoid misunderstandings, if you ask. It's amazing. And um, other things that I would add to that is choose the words, choose how you're addressing someone, choose what you are telling to the other person, speak with integrity, um, say only what you mean, um, Avoid using words that would be against yourself or that would cause suffering or they, they communicate an emotion, an unwanted emotion. Avoid speaking about others and gossiping about them. Um, use the power of your words in the direction of truth and love. Words are very, very, very powerful, potent. What we feed ourselves, what we say to ourselves, what we hear is super powerful. So use your words impeccably and wisely. Choose your words to yourself and to others. It's very important. Um, Another thing that is related to the victim mentality or what is to be a victim and the period you choose how to self-regulate and all those aspects, do not take anything personally. This is very precious. This is very, very precious. Nothing another person is doing is because of you. Simply what others are doing is a projection of their selves. What others are doing is a mirror. Um, it's a projection of their own reality, their own dreams. Their when you are when you are um, you, when you have more wisdom. When you are. Um, immune to the opinions and actions of others you won't be a victim to whatever they are telling you 
And again, a victim doesn't necessarily mean a negative thing. It means that you are suggestible and they are in control of the reaction that is happening to you and you are not in control of your own self. This is what is meant by being a victim. So, if you are immune to the opinions, the criticism and whatever the other person is telling you, you will avoid unnecessary drama, suffering or what is called the victim mentality because simply whatever anyone is telling you, their criticism, their opinions is a projection of their own selves. How do you notice something in another person? It's because you're aware of it. It's because it mirrors something in you. There is nothing personal. Have compassion for the other person. This is what I came to learn. Um, and always and always and always do your best. Do your best to explain something to the other person. If you are telling Anna that it it, it comes again to my uh, thoughts of how to communicate something to a loved one, how to tell something to a person you care about. Do not just tell them, stop the drama, stop being a drama queen. I don't want to be knowing a person who is always in a victim mentality. Do you, if you really care about that person, do your best to explain to them. What do you mean by, do not just blurt out things that they might not be understanding or they would think you're just attacking them. You have no idea what's going on in their minds or what is going on in their soul. So do your best to explain to those people what do you mean. To really give the advice at the best. And this is what comes to advice, but do your best generally in life. This best of you would change. You would have highs and lows in doing your best. Do your best when during your highs, do your best during your lows. It will not be the same, but always, if you will be doing something, do it fully or don't do it at all. So do your best. Um, it will be different when you are tired than when you are fully rested. Under any circumstances, just do your best. And you will avoid, like, later on when you think of something, you will be avoiding self-judgment, self-criticism, self-abuse, self-regret, and all those unnecessary feelings. So yeah. The four agreements. Do not make assumptions. Do your best. Choose your word, be impeccable, and use them with integrity. And do not take anything personally. Actually, um, those four agreements, um, they have been... Of course, you could realize those on your own because we are all humans. But um, they have been summed up and put together by Don Miguel Ruiz. You can search him and uh, check more of this in details. It's very precious. So yeah, people, 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 people. I'm so grateful for this person in my life because right now when I have shaken off my dust and I'm not a lost soul anymore and I am permeable and accepting to information and then uh, when I could travel back in time and go back to my memories that I have separated from the emotions accompanied to them because they are for me wisdom and I realized that this person was teaching me very precious things all the time but only that the way he was telling them the environment in which he was telling them if he just was aware of that, it would have made a great difference. I'm very grateful for those re learnings that now I am reflecting on them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I love you. I always will. So, 
I wanted to share those learnings. I wanted to explain what it is to be a victim mentality. I wanted to explain how to address your loved ones and to choose when and how to give advice. It's very important, people. And um, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to what I have to say. And I hope this would make a difference for you, for me, for everyone. I love you all. Sending you much love, gratitude and light. See you soon.